completely weaken Al Shabaab, KDF needed to hit its head. Kismayo. It was literally its headquarters and treasury. Uh, in those um, nefarious activities. So for Kenya to decide, it needed to decapitate that headquarter. So it was very important to capture it, get rid of the Al Shabaab from there, and therefore deny them the use of that base. Capturing Kismayo was key to the military men's playbook. And by taking over Kismayo, we were able to break the backbone, the logistical backbone that supported these criminals, the Al Shabaab, in Somalia. And therefore, we took away from them the um, logistical support that they were using to be able to carry out major engagement in Somalia. We actually saw the KDF Special Forces uh, liberating uh, Kismayu and uh, that really uh, uh, punctured Al-Shabaab's source of income uh, uh, and, and, and territory from which it was organizing most of the, their attacks. And with that one major uh, victory, Al-Shabaab was sent packing to the villages. However, Al-Shabaab is still very active uh, in Somalia. Kenya had deployed under 3,000 troops to seal off Al Shabaab strongholds in the massive and rough terrain. The best way to hit the militia was through a sting operation that will see the port captured and the enemy neutralized. It had to be done the right way and it had to be the right way once. There's no second chance. The operation was called Operation Sledgehammer. It was to be executed by the coordinated action of land, sea and air forces organized for invasion. An amphibious assault got Al-Shabaab unawares. The capture of Kisimayu, it had to be by surprise. And this is part of the um, logistics and uh, strategy. So you create impressions on one side as you do something else. Before the assault, training of most of the troops was conducted at Manda Bay. while that of commanders and divers was undertaken in Mkunguni between September 18th and 23rd, 2012. Before the defining raid, the Kenya Defense Forces had conducted tactical estimates and arrived at three courses of action. The first one was the capture of Kismayo through Kulbio Husingo and Bulahaji. Second one through Kulbio, Dalayet, Wadajir and Bulahaji. Or through the Indian Ocean using amphibious landing at Jirole through Kulbio, Manda Indian Ocean and Bulahaji. Amphibious assault was given a nod. 
the operation comprised the maritime force, a landing force, and an air component. The maritime force transported the troops and offered fire support. The landing force, which comprised majorly troops from 3BG, captured Kismai with support from the beachhead security who surveyed routes, provided guides to meeting points and supported subsequent operations. Here, yeah, I'm holding 20 rounds in this magazine. Here, yeah, I'm holding 40. This way, 40. All together, this 100 rounds. Together, this one. This belt has 150 rounds. Enough to fight. Enough to fight. As per me, enough to fight. Because only one round, one Al Shabab. The enemy, the Al Shabab, they are all over here. Anytime we can be, be, be shot. The air component comprising army attack helicopters and fighter jets secured the airspace and conducted aerial surveillance to the landing force. The assault began in the early hours of September 28, 2012. One year after the kidnapping that forced Kenya to move into Somalia, there was a feeling in Nairobi that the mission had been accomplished. It is noteworthy that terrorist activities and border incursions by non-state actors have significantly reduced thanks to the actions of KDF as well as our other security agencies operating under the multi-agency framework. Jubaland state, like many other states of Somalia, had no army nor police. Kenyan troops under the army's home began assisting with security of Kismayo. The objective of rebuilding Somalia relied on establishing a national Somalia army and police force.